and we have Yossi Sassi from Ten Root uh, to talk about investigating Active Directory with open source tools. So, welcome, Yossi. Hi, guys. Welcome, everybody. Um, so I'll just hit it off and. Um, Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, it's been fun to watch so far. The things I've, I've saw was were really great. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Active Directory forensics. Uh, I'm coming from an offensive uh, background, mostly, but not only. Um, and hopefully today in this session, I'll give you uh, some good intro for Active Directory forensics, as well as obviously, of course, sharing some open source tools that you'll find useful. Um, so a bit about myself when I'm not playing um, my uh, guitars, the different instruments, stringed instruments that I play, uh, especially a bazooka guitar, an instrument I, I invented. I'm with computers. Uh, I grew up uh, as a kid, uh, a, a modem hacker in the 80s, uh, and I've been with keyboards with keyboards for a while, from the Open VMS days through Novell Network, and obviously discovered Microsoft in the uh, somewhere in the mid 90s. Uh, and also worked for Microsoft uh, for about eight years in late 90s, early 2000s. Um, uh, I am a co-founder of uh, Tenwood Cybersecurity, a uh, niche boutique uh, company specializing in red teaming and DFIR. So when I'm not doing DFIR, at the moment I am at the customer shop somewhere in Central Europe. As I predicted, I will not know where I'm uh, delivering this talk from, uh, I figured right. Uh, I could never have guessed where I will be shipped to. Um, and regarding the subject matter at hand, uh, Active Directory, I've been around with Active Directory technologies since the early beta for uh, its third decade now. I was also part of uh, Javelin Networks uh, and we got acquired by Symantec. Uh, back in 2018. Um, so about the subject at hand, uh, uh, I feel very comfortable to talk about. Uh, so uh, let's speak about Active Directory. You know, Active Directory essentially is a database, uh, distributed database, uh, multi-master replication. Uh, it is uh, the source for users, computers, passwords, access control, etc. And you know, we used to talk about how they got in and what they took out, but not as much about how they moved uh, laterally, how they performed the reconnaissance for assets, entities, how they achieved persistence, escalated privileges through the network, through the domain services. Um, so in this talk, we're going to uh, go out of the host-based uh, forensics and uh, uh, processes, memory, etc., and we'll speak more about the directory. And uh, coming from dozens of uh, AD forensic hands-on uh, incidents and hunting for clues in the enterprise directory without uh, AD logs, when uh, domain controllers were totally uh, encrypted or uh, security logs were wiped, uh, so I will share with you some open source tools that uh, it should be fun for both uh, red, blue teams, purple teams. Um, so this database Active Directory is totally hackable, right? Uh, we see it every day. Um, and although people like to talk about, uh, uh, you know, the, the other elements of an attack in every campaign, etc., uh, never miss out that somewhere in the middle between the phishing or open RDP uh, or whatever, uh, to the end result, uh, a data leakage or uh, a ransomed uh, organization, there was Active Directory on the way, right? Because Active Directory runs like uh, roughly 95% still of the world's organization's identity management and access control. And it never ceases to amaze me that even in its third decade of existence, we still find uh, lethal critical vulnerabilities in AD that were lurking there for over two decades. For example, Last summer, we had zero logon. Uh, you can see this quote, uh, if you can imagine uh, the Homeland Security, the security of uh, US government uh, uh, recommending uh, enterprises to essentially uh, remove domain controllers from their networks, right? So why is AD so hackable? Well, I think it has to do a bit like what happened with TCP IP. You see, also TCP IP as a protocol of suite a sweet pour of course, protocols, <laughs> quite sweet though. Uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, 
I don't think it was never meant to be used the way we use it. I know, we know. Uh, the architecture and design, design goals were really far from the landscapes and threats that it's meeting now. So uh, non-repudiation, uh, uh, spoofing, uh, trust issues, all this were never in the design goals of TCPIP. And same with Active Directory. Uh, when it was designed, uh, there was no cloud, there was no VMware, there was no Google, there was no uh, web services, there was no uh, JSON, there was nothing that we know today. Uh, and it's really, that's the reason it's involved in every breach. It's a huge attack surface and essentially it is the Microsoft mainframe. You have to admit it, it's here to last uh, with all the rush for cloud. Uh, many organizations will never, if uh, maybe at some point of some workloads, will always stay with that and compromising your AD really means uh, game over. So the problem begins with knowledge, or uh, should I say lack of it, uh, because uh, from my experience, many people think they know AD uh, and they think they know AD security. Uh, but to be honest, once you really take the red pill and you have to really understand how AD works and, and security in AD goes, uh, then you see the, the gaps. Uh, so a quick one-on-one kind of intro to really understand the topic at hand is uh, you really need to have a good wrap of uh, how identities, authentication, authorization, and the auditing mechanisms uh, work in Windows uh, in general and AD in particular to address this kind of uh, project or topic. Uh, understand the difference between logon, logon sessions and authentications which can occur in multiple types and the difference between local accounts and domain accounts and how they behave, dif they behave differently and the artifacts they leave behind. Security principles, most uh, people not uh, really uh, into AD in, uh, in depth uh, might not be aware that uh, users, computers, and groups uh, all have and can have uh, security IDs, uh, meaning uh, SIDs, uh, and this means that they can be given permissions and they uh, can be used as part of the access token, the authentication, or authorization for a resource. Uh, not only that, that computers are accounts to every uh, single aspect like users. So with computers, you can log on to the domain, you can perform uh, actions and changes and uh, whatever you want. A computer is a user account uh, to every single extent. And authentication protocols include not only Kerberos and NTLM, but also LDAP. LDAP or LDAP-S, which is essentially LDAP over TLS, SSL. Microsoft don't have an LDAP-S provider per se, it's just a port. Uh, so this is an authentication portal, protocol, not just an application protocol. And you can uh, and you use it, probably some systems in your organization use it for authentication. You would see it for VPN, storage, etc. By default, it's uh, sending uh, the authentication in clear text if you don't have LDAPS, etc. Authorization, normally we're used to see that coming from uh, group memberships, uh, but I'll show you in a second why uh, this uh, can be tricky. But there could be other places where the uh, ACLs, the access control lists of who uh, can do what, allow, deny, etc. Uh, can be tricky because you can have direct seed assignments, so the security IDs can be directly assigned to the object, whether it's a, a folder, a process, whatever. Or you can have, uh, uh, if you're talking about Active Directory, you can have object access types, which is which are essentially uh, permissions that can be delegated for specific tasks, like reset password, replicate changes to domain controllers, install domain replicas, etc. Uh, and hunting them down isn't uh, always the most trivial uh, task, especially not in the in the GUI. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the whole department of Windows internals, process, thread, handles, uh, everything in between them, that's something you should really have wrapped up before you get into this task. So a couple of confusing concepts. The first is, is called a PAC, a PAC, a Privilege Attribute Certificate. Uh, essentially, this is the uh, effective access token of group uh, seeds group um, uh, that you have in your uh, access token after a Kerberos authentication. Here in this example, uh, I am taking out the uh, principal membership of user Laura with some day-to-day uh, -day use tools, the Active Directory module from PowerShell. And you would think, okay, so this user Laura has only those groups enumerated, but in this uh, PowerShell script, one of the uh, for a few, a couple of tools that we share today, 
Uh, once you use the, this uh, command, this new uh, function, get AD principal cables token group, so this will uh, uh, give you actually different results. So you won't be wondering, okay, uh, what the heck, uh, in the GUI and in, the, in PowerShell module, I didn't see those groups, where are they coming from? So they are coming essentially from Q, uh, nested groups uh, inside the uh, groups that one of or more of those groups are hosted at. So that's one thing to be aware of when you're thinking about the actual permissions of groups that maybe you might be a member of other groups and they're part of your token. Another interesting concept is admin SD holder. Uh, this is part of uh, keeping privileges on uh, privileged groups uh, in the domain. You can see my user here, Kai, that I'm logged on with, has no uh, group membership. So essentially has, uh, is, is a normal domain user, not privileged at all. And if we're trying to access the domain controller, obviously I can't do anything. Access denied, etc. Uh, so to to the naked eye, this account uh, really uh, can do no harm, right? It's a normal uh, domain user, normal account with no special permissions and no group memberships at all. Uh, but uh, now I'm gonna try with Kai. I'm gonna uh, try to edit the members of uh, enterprise admins, right? Uh, along with domain admins and uh, backup operators, several operators, account operators, all those are privileged groups. Enterprise admins uh, are really uh, privileged, also in the forest level. And voila, I can add users to privileged groups as Kai. Um, and that change happened. So how does this get to happen at all? So admin SD holder is a container uh, under the system container in the domain. Essentially, this process is meant to re uh, protected uh, user privilege uh, groups. Uh, and that's why you will not see uh, this if you don't check for that. Oh, to add on top of that, AD is exposed by design from every endpoint. Um, meaning, uh, in, in, and not only every trusted uh, endpoint, every trusted domain member and user uh, is uh, sharing quite a lot of trust with the, this database, but it does so in dozens of protocols and APIs. So LDAP, DNS, DCOM, uh, OLEDB, uh, Summer, ADSI, ADWS, you name it, uh, It's there are so many. Uh, and we see it, of course, as a basic building block in every advanced persistent threat, uh, every APT that was and still going. Uh, and of course, it's quite pivotal to ransomware. Uh, fun stuff. And uh, just to wrap up this section, uh, if you look at the minimum required ports for a domain controller to work, uh, boy oh boy. <laughs> so obviously I'm not going to go on each of every one of them, but you can understand this uh, Swiss cheese really requires some handling. To add on top of that, Microsoft has uh, always been confusing throughout the years. In the last 20 or so years, they have changed their mind like five, six times about the security arch architectural recommendations. Obviously, customers cannot change every two, three years the entire architecture of their network and access control and management boundaries. Uh, so this leaves plenty of room for attackers uh, to thrive. So about Hacktive Directory Forensics. So by now we understand that AD is extremely uh, common in corporate world and it's not as secure as uh, you would imagine and need to be. Uh, and there are a lot of creative backdoors, admin as the older, CD story, etc. Um, so we really want at the end of the day to get to know who did what and when from the network perspective and to be able to correlate those signals, uh, especially in terms of reconnaissance, lateral movement uh, and authentications uh, between uh, different uh, endpoints on the network. Uh, and look for backdoors if there are any. Uh, the sources of truth in AD can be coupled uh, roughly to a set of files, mainly SysVol, which is uh, read for everyone, and uh, also NetLogon, logs, etc. Uh, the event tracing for Windows, the event log, Windows ETW, of course, security log, but not only, a set of logs on the domain controller, and essentially uh, live network traffic, right? So from a, when you, you do some network sniffing and pickup, uh, but each one of those sources is either not uh, uh, relevant for uh, anything, everything that we talked about or uh, it does not exist. Maybe it has to be turned on or be run. And especially in a, a before, during and after approach, 
when you speak about an incident before an approach, you, you need to run uh, and prepare yourself and re-enable in advance some stuff or run the sniffing uh, and have a really smart sensor uh, that is adequate uh, in terms of performance and knows what to, to parse, etc. So this really leaves us with the two uh, elements that I'm going to focus on in the rest of the presentation and in the tools that I've prepared and will share with you today, uh, which is the AD database, essentially the NTTS DIT file, director information tree, and the replication property uh, metadata. So the NTDS DIT file uh, is uh, essentially uh, uh, just a, a database, the database file, and uh, it has some other files, the uh, checksum file, etc. I'm not going to go over all of them, but the NTDS DIT is the important one, and it has a few utilities that you can manage it through. Uh, the most uh, common one is, of course, NTDS util. And there is the replication property metadata. Now, the replication property metadata this attribute, uh, you will not see it by default, not in the UI and not in the scripts, uh, in ADSI or in uh, the AD modules, but I promise you it's there. And it's really holding the information in two uh, main uh, attributes. The one is MSDS REPL attribute metadata, which every uh, object has, including organizational units, computers, etc. And the other is for multi-valued attributes, MSDS REPL value metadata, which is uh, vector-based. So it's for multi-valued attributes, essentially group membership. So uh, let's see where those properties are, because like I told you now, you will see for just now, if I'm querying all the properties on an object, in this case, a user object, so you don't see them at all. So where is this object? I just saw it uh, a minute ago. Uh, so we can start with the REPL property metadata, which is uh, essentially it's a set of bytes, right? So we can actually query and uh, fetch uh, those bytes, but we won't have too much uh, to do with them. Instead, we're, we're going to, although we didn't see it in the properties coming back from the object, we're going to directly query the MSDS REPL attribute metadata. And here we get back an XML. So it's there. It was not showing us it's there. And an XML, of course, is something we know to work with. Bear in mind, JSON did not exist when this technology was developed. So would it be nice, instead of uh, those bunch of XML files and, uh, uh, and flat files on the database, uh, that uh, we could read it into a nice grid and see all the changes in one place. So uh, that's, that's exactly what, what has been done. So uh, in this next scenario, we'll see uh, we're going to search for a string recursively in all AD objects. We're going to find some renamed accounts. Then we're going to find out the logs were wiped and we don't have a SIM. We know those customers and then AD replication metadata to the rescue. So let's uh, get ahead and start with this demo. So I have a user named Annette and I, I saw some uh, forensic evidence linking uh, this account to suspicious activity. But when I query Active Directory, I don't find this user for some reason. So one thing to keep in mind in the before incident approach is to enable the AD optional feature of Recycle Bin, which allows you to reanimate objects with a tombstone uh, lifetime of minimum of uh, default 180 days, etc. But uh, now we can use one of the scripts I prepared for you today, which is uh, the search for string in AD. And this parser script essentially goes recursively to uh, the entire effective directory and looks for any string that you will give it. And it can also show the uh, match details. Uh, now we're gonna, so, so now we see where it found that. It found it from the uh, file uh, time uh, stamp on the, on the password last set of this uh, user. Now we're gonna search for password, which is an interesting thing to do. By the way, this script also looks for uh, IP addresses in regex and, and could also help you to find if there is some sensitive information leaking from uh, uh, all kinds of attributes in AD. So we find a, a lot of benign uh, results here, like the pass ROTC password replication, uh, or maybe the LAPS, local administrator password solution. Uh, but here we find the password reset, and this was done by user Annette on June 25th. So uh, obviously, in one of the attributes, we found some evidence to something that has to do with Annette. Uh, and let's go back and um, query uh, for uh, Annette this time. And yeah, we, we, we see this evidence. So obviously Annette was uh, in this domain. So uh, now we're gonna move on to another script. This one requires the uh, event logs, or at least one of them. 
And uh, here we find the events 47681, which are renamed accounts. So we can see two events. This is not interesting in particular, uh, but a rename of a SAM account name, uh, the login name, bear in mind that it has to be, it's not something ordinary, right? So we can also refresh and see that in the event logs if you want. And uh, we can see this action happened. So whether it was uh, deliberate uh, or known to us by a sysadmin or the attacker, we're not sure yet. But now we do know that uh, the user uh, that we need to work with is Jane D, Jane Doe. So the next script we're going to use is uh, fetching the replication metadata history and tracking all the object changes since the inception of this uh, AD object. And of course, populate it into a, a grid. So uh, this script uh, really goes from the creation of the account. You can see it was created uh, on October 2016. Uh, you can see the uh, creation date and uh, the initial password reset. You can see the initial attributes populated at the same time could probably indicate uh, an automated script because multiple attributes have been populated, the company, etc. But here's an interesting thing. After this initial creation of the account, nothing uh, interesting happened, but on uh, July uh, 20, uh, just last year, it was uh, it became a privileged account by the admin count equals one. So this attribute really means that uh, this user was a member, became to be a member of a privileged group. And another interesting change in the application metadata is that uh, we see seed history populated with seed 500. So if the relative ID is 500, these two uh, uh, findings are really troubling because this means the user, which should not be a, a privileged user, was or maybe still is, we'll find out in a minute, uh, a privileged user. Um, and now we're going to import another tool, another script. This is the get AD group changes. This is quite a useful uh, tool that will run even if you don't have uh, any uh, event logs. It is totally based on the application metadata. Bear in mind, directly from the database. And it reads all the changes from the domain inception, uh, since the domain creation. Uh, and we can see here that the, this user became a member of a privileged uh, uh, group uh, back uh, in, in that same day. Uh, he was a member of backup operators and he was removed from that a group and the same day. So that's a suspicious activity. We can continue and use this uh, this command, this uh, uh, tool to look for uh, other uh, changes. For example, we can look for changes in membership for in group uh, domain admins. We can see, uh, for example, user Terry here, uh, which was removed from the group uh, and he shouldn't be a domain admin. Uh, this user was part of uh, develop is a part of development team. Uh, more interesting than that, he was added and removed after uh, one hour or so, but his member uh, admin count attribute was reset. So this is if it was not done by a, a user that we know, this is very suspicious. Uh, the next thing I want to show you with this uh, tool is that we can work uh, with this tool uh, with an offline backup of AD. So in this case, I'm logged out of the domain. I'm in a normal uh, account, normal workstation. This is my standalone Windows 10 machine. And now I imported the, the module and I'm going to use a, a snapshot or a database backup, a system state backup to query uh, this uh, uh, database uh, instance. And what it, this command does uh, is loading the database in memory. Essentially, I'm loading an LDAP server in memory and querying the instance in real time. So uh, keep in mind that in a scenario, probably you had that if you're doing uh, incident response, you had a scenario where the domain controllers are offline or maybe all of them were wiped and uh, encrypted and you only have a backup from some time ago and you still want to have some forensic investigation and to know uh, who did what and when. So. Both the scripts uh, of uh, this uh, get AD group membership, uh, as well as the replication metadata history, the entire history of changes that happened to the user, uh, are both available for uh, both online and offline. And in the offline mode, you can run it outside of the domain without having to connect to the domain controllers at all. And they also have an option for all changes out to grid. So this means I see all the additions and removals of members from all the groups in Active Directory, 
since the dawn of uh, this domain. Uh, and I can uh, quite easily filter that in the, uh, in the grid and uh, by any field that I want to. Um, so those are, those are there's a, there's a bunch more of tools that, that I'm using that I'm sharing with you today. Uh, I've uh, collected them all uh, on on a GitHub page. Uh, also collected a couple uh, from other uh, great tools from other people that that have collected them. So you can either go to hectodirectory.com or directly to my GitHub page to get those. So some uh, key takeaways. Uh, hopefully you saw there are interesting uh, forensic artifacts that can be taken from Active Directory. Uh, not all of them are out of the box, but certainly they can be fetched uh, with the right uh, knowledge and open source tools. Uh, keep in mind, uh, AD is of course a part of the bigger picture. Uh, whether you're doing like event correlation with XDR or anything else, uh, be, be sure not to get to a situation where you need to pick up the breadcrumbs from your uh, uh, um, replication metadata. But if you do get to a place where you have no SIM, no uh, domain controllers alive uh, and working right now, or you isolated your network and you still need to do a quick forensic investigation on the domain entities and know uh, all the changes back in time, even if all your domain, uh, security event logs were wiped, uh, you can do that with uh, this set of tools uh, and really try to practice a before, during, after approach uh, to be sure you are ready with the tools and knowledge before you get to a real incident. Hopefully you shouldn't uh, get to that. Uh, and be sure to just uh, drop me comments or improvements uh, that you would like to see. And um, thank you. T Hanks, everybody. I'll be coming to the Discord channel in a second, so I'll be open for questions. Great, thank you very much, Yossi. Um, been kind of watching the channels, sure. a, lot, a lot of a lot of good comments in there. Um, I'm not sure I saw any kind of specific questions, but I, I had a couple, and maybe uh, some will come up here as part of this. Um, but uh, so one thing I, I see as, as you talk about this is, you know, certainly some groups are now moving towards, um, you know, Azure Active Directory and kind of cloud-based Active Directory. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in those kind of environments, will will a, a responder have access to these kinds of files? Or are those kind of you know not not available if they're if they or their customer is using kind of that managed service? Right. So uh, Azure AD uh, essentially it has nothing to do with AD. It's a, it's a marketing scheme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, just SAML. It's not Kerberos, and it's uh, for SSO reasons. You know, it does replicate the objects uh, from the on-prem, and it it has uh, like this hybrid approach. Uh, but uh, no, essentially this. Uh, this type of uh, artifacts uh, will be available for the on-prem services. And, and to be honest, statistically, most of the organizations today are still hybrid. Um, so that could work. And a lot of attacks are uh, beginning with the on-prem and moving to the clouds or vice versa, like SolarWinds. So uh, you have to be prepared for artifacts on both environments. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the scripts that you've written, are, are they, um, you know, kind of, doing their own parsing of these databases and going to nooks and crannies that you, Windows doesn't actually, you know, go normally? Uh, or is it more of just kind of, you know, abstracting out some of the existing PowerShell and other kind of, you know, Windows commands to make them easier to kind of, you know, plumb together a bunch of commands and, and, and find things? Well, in, in a sense, they're doing both, but essentially it is a pure, those scripts are pure implementation uh, with no dependencies, uh, no modules. So we don't need the, the AD module for PowerShell. You don't need anything. And they work directly with the native APIs or directly with uh, the actual uh, database file. Uh, so yeah, they're doing also a lot of the parsing, the work uh, behind the scenes, but they also give you capabilities that are, are not existent in uh, the graphic uh, user interfaces today. So that they'll be really useful if you know what you need. If uh, you know your job is to do AD forensics, that's uh, those tools will be useful for sure. Great, great. Um, one question I had, I'm, I'm still scrolling through a bunch of things on here. Um, mm -hmm. What is the Boozy guitar that you're, if I missed that, <laughs> that you created? Buzukita, right? It's essentially it's a, a hybrid of uh, a buzuki, a Greek traditional mandolin, an electric guitar, and an acoustic guitar. So, like three different instruments in one body with two necks, and uh, it's sort of the embodiment of my musical journey in an instrument. So, uh, uh, I play kind of Oriental rock, and uh, I've, I've been doing that for a while. 
that that's my online persona. That's what you'll see in my OSINT. So, uh, <laughs> well, next, next year I think we balance. may ask our submissions <laughs> if they have their own kind of walk-in music. We could have uh, could have had you go in or out with their own music. That would be great. So, yeah. So, thank you very much right. for your talk. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much.